going global on rails and our uh, Cookpad's experiences uh, expanding beyond Japan in the recent last year. Uh, so my name is Miles. That's me on Twitter, but I don't say anything very interesting. And that's me on GitHub, and I don't really uh, publish anything interesting there either. Um, I'm from England originally, and uh, it's quite, it was interesting that panel discussion. People were talking about uh, you know, the first experience coding, and I just realized how goddamn old I am. Um, my first experience was probably when I was about 11, 1980. And in those days, it was uh, you buy a magazine that had like a, you know a bunch of basic code. You'd be typing for like eight hours. At the end of eight hours, it would just like print, print a circle on the screen or something. But that's uh, that was my beginning. But um, Yeah, then uh, from England, I moved to San Francisco, worked in lots of startups, and then on to uh, Japan. That's Japan. I was looking for interesting pictures of Japan, and that's the best I could come up with. So uh, it's a really cool place, and you know, this is me on the way to work on a typical, typical day in uh, Tokyo. It's not really. It was just some Godzilla thing. And uh, yeah, I work at Cookpad, and uh, I've been there for about six years now, uh, which is the longest time I worked anywhere, I think. Um, We have a very simple mission to improve people's lives through cooking. Uh, and in Japan, it's a very big service, and it's been going for eight, 18 years now, which is uh, pre-Google, pre-almost everything. It's been a very long-running service. Um, and I think somebody mentioned earlier, but the 80% of women between uh, 20 and 40 use Cookpad every month, which is just doesn't seem possible, but uh, it's a fact. Um, you know, we have a great business there, but it's very... Um, You know, very Japanese, very Japan-centric. Not many people, including me, can read any of this, apart from the cookpad at the top. So it's, it's, it's amazing for Japan, but it's not very good for anybody else. Um, so then we kind of embarked on a project to take what we've learned at Cookpad over the last 18 years collectively and bring it international. And we started by acquiring a few other recipe companies in Spain, uh, Indonesia, Lebanon, um, and trying to make figure out how we can make cooking more fun for everyone all over the world. So we've gradually, over the last year, been pulling these uh, other services and their content and teams into uh, into one platform, into Cookpad International. And now we have about 25 million unique users around the world in uh, eight, eight languages, I think. I might be wrong. So we have, you know, this we have these local teams, the companies we acquired, but, and we have a global development Uh, effort. And I want to talk a little bit about some of the challenges and some of the tools we've come up with to try and make that a bit easier. But just to give some idea, this is our uh, HQ in uh, Tokyo. Um, and, you know, we have a lot of experience, like I said, about how people cook in Japan. This is uh, our office in, I'm just going to come in all these pictures. Uh, yeah, we, this is our office in Indonesia. Um, and What we find, why we want people on the ground in different countries is unique challenges in each place. And to have engineers living there and living the life, eating the food with their families is so much more powerful than, than me trying to figure out what people in Jakarta want to do and the problems they have. For instance, one thing is uh, um, cell phone. Uh, cell phones are really, really painful to use. Um, here actually seems great, but uh, And they're always complaining, but till I went there, and it was just mind-blowing how, you know, you're just staring at a screen and the thing's spinning, everything you look at. So high performance is a really important thing, and, and living there with that every day, you really want to focus on that um, that problem. Then we have a, that's a nice office in Spain. Uh, Spain has a really interesting challenge that it's a very widely spoken language across uh, 20, 21 countries, I think. Um, but the, the regions are very different, so what we what we kind of present to people in Spain is very different to what people in Argentina might be eating, or South America, and even North America with um, uh, Mexico. So we have a lot of challenges around you know, trying to uh, personalize the content, the same content in Spanish, but for different audiences. And having people in Spain, and we have a couple of people in there, or some, someone in Mexico, really, really helps that. Again, in uh, Lebanon, that's a crazy picture of the team in Lebanon, but... Uh, Obviously, Arabic is right to left, and we can't read that, and it's, it brings all kinds of challenges. So having engineers and people on the ground there is really, really important. Then we have a few other teams, Kamakura, Palo Alto. Coming up next, UK. So we're, we're really, really focused on this, getting engineers all over, the, all over the world to help us with this problem. So we 
Sounds about a few work flows, and we're still working, and we'd really love to hear anybody else's experiences, but this is a few, few things that we, we've been working on. Um, doesn't really mean much, so let's start with this one. Uh, first one is that kind of validating. So everybody has tons of ideas. We all think we know. You know, I think I know the best thing. Everybody thinks they know the best thing. When the team's very distributed, that becomes very hard to communicate. Um, and we, we really wanted to enforce some kind of process and flow to not only come up with ideas, but follow them through, communicate the idea, but then also uh, validate and prove that my idea was actually a good idea. Uh, so we, we start with this hypothesis, uh, give me a drink, hypothesis driven development, which is something I think uh, we saw thought about blogging about, not really good, and uh, we kind of jumped head first in. And this template kind of shows the main points that we, we really want to have an owner of this this um, this kind of card or story. And it seems obvious, but when you've got a hundred different things happening at once, there has to be one champion who's going to see that through one point person that you can talk to. We also want to know why, you know, why do we want to do this? There must be some story behind it. What's the reason for this feature or idea or change in the system? <coughs> And then lastly is the hypothesis, and, and this is a really, this is really, really difficult, but really, really valuable. Uh, see if I can move this. Oh, here we go. This thing. So in every story, we try and come up with this little hypothesis. We believe that something will result in the outcome, and we'll know we've succeeded when there's some measurable result. And it seems trivial, but it's actually really, really hard to. You have an idea that oh, I want to make the, uh, I want to make the, create recipe button purple because I, I like purple. That's probably the kind of thing that might come up. And then you have to say, well, I believe that making the create recipe button purple will result in, what, what do I think it will result in? Bad example, but it's very hard, you know. So you have to really think through and, and think through what the, the uh, consequences and also the success measurement will be. So we'll just see what about these slides. So yeah, that's what we just talked about. And that's, uh, that's something we kind of really abide by. And it's, it's really, really hard to keep everybody focused and keep everybody in the, in the company working on the same, same kind of idea. Lots of people, not just engineers, as CEOs, as community people, lots and lots of people. So it's, it's really hard work. Um, this one is, uh, this is maybe my favorite. Uh, and uh, it's a gem kind of cobbled together by uh, this guy at the front here. And we, we really, I really love using this thing. And basically, we're always making pull requests and we're always using stories from the developers we use Pivotal Tracker. And countless times I'd be thinking, you know, um, I, I want to work on a story to make this button purple. And I'm, think, I'm about to start and I'm thinking, well, what's the branch? What should I call the branch name? Uh, let's call it uh, purple button. Or So I'm just, I'm wasting time thinking of things. Um, I'm just, just busy work. So this, this flow kind of automates that from command line to pivotal tracker to GitHub. Um, and basically, once we have all of our stories in pivotal tracker, we just type git start on the command line, and we see all the stories, uh, and we type in the number we want. And uh, PT flow will automatically create the branch, and you can start wor working. Uh, and then when you finish, git finish will push the branch and uh, uh, connect to GitHub and create your pull request for you. And it, again, it seems trivial, but when you're doing this 10 times a day for six years, you save a lot of, I don't like to have to think, so this means I don't have to think. It takes all the information from the story title that someone else has already worked on. So it's really, really time saving. The third thing that we also, we, I think, got this from someone at GitHub, uh, Richard, I should have written his name, uh, Sandheim. And I saw him presenting at Ruby Kaigi, and this seemed like a really interesting thing that they were doing at GitHub. Ah, that guy. Um, and it's basically, in Cookpad Japan, we have an amazing framework called Chanko, which is really involved and does amazing things for releasing small features to different people. But we really wanted to start from the other end and make something super simple. And we often have a situation where, uh, for instance, in, uh, what's happening now? Maybe Indonesia have some hypothesis from the validation board, and they will create that hypothesis, and they want to just test in one region. So we'll use a feature toggle, which is simple as something like this in a helper. 
uh, we'll have a, a method that just says where it's enabled. Well, this one's Indonesia, uh, or for languages, Indonesian, English, and uh, Vietnamese. And then in our code, we'll just wrap the code with that um, puzzle. And it, se and it seems a little bit hokey, but it actually works. It's really simple. Everyone can understand. One of the keys is not to have hundreds of these at once, so really to try and keep on top. And this is something we don't do well, but keep on top of them and, and make sure that the hypothesis for this trending keywords was proven. And if it's proven, we can remove this code and release everywhere. The our idea is that we you know, create a hypothesis, prove it somewhere, validate the results, and then crop it into the word. Uh, where are we? It's going rather fast. I have to talk more slowly. Uh, this is uh, another another gem. Also, that uh, PT flow I should have said is uh, open source. Most of these things, are, all of these things are open source. Um, the CP8 is a new uh, a new project that basically we're trying to show that we care, but really care about code and um, push people to share what they're working on and as a work in progress as early as possible. So we encourage this kind of WIP means it's a work in progress, which means I've, I'm, I'm working on something, but uh, I kind of want some feedback. I don't want to get too far, you know, into the down a rabbit hole without anyone else who's looking at this. Um, so then we have this CP8 Cooktime bot. Um, and what it does, it's basically just looking at our repo and tagging things and watching what's happening. So when somebody puts a, a WIP in, in the title of their pull request, it will automatically label it as such in, um, uh, in GitHub, which really helps it. It's simple to see visually. And then when you remove WIP from the title, you know, when you're ready for a review, it will remove that tag. Um, another simple example is giving a, this is that guy, yeah, giving a thumbs up will automatically tag it as reviewed. Um, and that just means that basically once it's reviewed, it's ready to be deployed by the, the uh, submitter wherever they want. Doesn't seem like much, but when you've got you know 20 or so pull requests running at the same time, to have this kind of visual, easy, glanceable thing uh, really, really saves a lot of time. Um, we all like saving time. One other new feature, which I haven't really been paying attention to, uh, but uh, basically we're scanning for old. I think this is something that they do in the uh, in Rails um, repository as well. Scanning for things that haven't been acted upon for four or five weeks, uh, just closing them trying to smiley face or a heart or something, but basically we're saying if you, if you haven't got this done in five weeks, then it's probably not that important. Uh, then, yeah, the last, last one I want to talk about is uh, called Capistrano Fiesta. And this is a little bit like, uh, it's again, it's about communicating to a bigger team, people distributed around the world in different time zones. And we found that when we're releasing um, a feature, when we release it, lots of people want to know, but lots of people aren't looking at GitHub, um, and we want a way, a way to communicate that. So we thought, oh, I know, we'll have a release channel in Slack, and we'll type in what we've done. But being, you know, humans, we often forget to type that in, or we forget something. Um, so what Fiesta attempts to do, uh, and does really well, actually, is, is, is remove that kind of pain point. And when you uh, deploy to production, it scans all the pull requests, um, since the last time that uh, Master was deployed. And based on that, it will open up uh, Vim console. So you've done your capture on a deploy, da -da 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 -da. then you get this thing popping up that basically passes all of the, the titles from pull requests since the last deploy and any images. And you can you know, quickly edit if you want, but then when you save that, it automatically pushes that out to the Slack channel. Uh, so now we, you know, we tend not to miss anything and everybody knows what's happening and we don't have to go back and think, oh, what did we do in this release? What did we do in that release? Um, so yeah, so it's a really great time saver. So this is an example of a uh, little top page was broken on IE. Yikes. Uh, skip past that one. Um, uh, uh, the other thing, Fiesta also creates a, a release on GitHub for every deploy. So it effectively gives us uh, automated change log and we can go back and see what happened. So really, really useful. And all these things are kind of small in and of themselves, but when you have a large team, we have maybe, I think now in the international team, uh, the Cookpad Japan is very big and we have 100 engineers and tons of stuff going on. International, we kind of run separately and we have 
about 20 engineers in uh, maybe six or seven different countries, so spanning all time zones. So this kind of over communication, but over communication in a way that's familiar is really, really important. Um, yeah, so this may have other facts, but yeah. So yeah, wrapping up, basically it's these, these five processes are, you know, we've evolved over the last year um, and it's really, really helped us and it's uh, really key to helping us be productive. But I'm definitely interested in hearing what anyone else is talking about or doing in that kind of situation. Also, we'd like to just want to thank uh, Rexy and the teams. It's a really uh, amazing, you know, organization. Very new and very chaotic, and I think everybody's really stressed out. But so far, really great, really impressed, and uh, kind of reminds me of Ruby Taigi a few years ago when it was still very new and people running around crazy and worried. But yeah, really going great. So we're really happy to be involved and happy to be able to uh, to contribute. Yeah. So once again, that's me, and uh, I was a little bit quick. I should also mention a really tree uh, quick that we're hiring. Uh, there's so many things we're trying to do in so many places, and it's it's really hard to find great people who kind of uh, connect with our mission and, and want to help us. So we're trying to find Rails people, iOS, Android is going crazy in Indonesia and uh, uh, Middle East. Um, machine learning also, we're doing starting to get involved with all the image recognition and how that can help us provide tools and make things easier for people cooking and, and, and sharing recipes. Uh, so yeah, tons of exciting stuff. Um, yeah, that's about it. Maybe anybody have any questions about uh, Godzilla or anything I've talked about or uh, living in England, feel free to ask. Also, any, any, anything that you're doing similarly to, to work with distributed teams, we'd love to hear. Yeah, okay, well, thanks so much. Sorry for the rambling. <laughs>